Hello everybody and welcome to our class video about composite area. Our learning goal is that you will be able to determine the area of a composite figure. So uh, what is a composite figure anyway? Okay, so a composite figure is composed of more than one basic shape. So you could have like a rectangle and a circle, you could have a trapezoid and a hexagon, you could have any combination you want. Okay, and you find the area of a composite figure by adding or subtracting the individual areas of each of the component shapes. Okay, so for example, if you had a rectangle attached to a triangle, you could add the two areas together. Now, it'd probably make a little more sense if I showed you an example, so let's do that. So here's a classic one. Let's design a pool. So, if this is going to be the layout of your pool and you, that you're going to build in your backyard, you would need to know the area of the pool and the area of the concrete that needs to be laid around the pool. Okay, so using this diagram, let's find that. All right, so here's our basic strategy for these kinds of questions. You want to divide the area into convenient shapes. Okay, that pool is not really a convenient shape at the moment. Okay, it's kind of an L-shaped something or other. Okay, but I could break it down into two rectangles, like rectangle one and rectangle two. Okay, so if I do that, I could find the area of both rectangles separately. So to find the area of rectangle one, I would use the formula area equals base times height, that's for a rectangle which would be 6 feet times 18 feet. Okay, so that means the area for that part would be 108 square feet. Make sure you remember to write the units on all of your answers. That does make a difference, you know. Okay, then for the area of rectangle number 2, still the same formula, the base is 24 feet. But what about the height? Okay, so if you notice, that length is given over there is 18 feet, the width of the entire pool. Then that little piece right there is 3 feet. That means what's left for the height of that rectangle number 2 is 15. So the height is 15 feet. Okay, so that would give me an area for rectangle number 2 of 360 square feet. So then to find the area of the pool in total, I would just add the two together, and I'd have 468 square feet. Again, make sure you remember to put your units. If you don't put units, it could be like, I could assume it's like 468 elephants or something. Anyway, okay, so we found the area of the pool. Let's find the area of the concrete now. All right, so... We have this entire giant rectangle that will be made of concrete, except for the pool. If I do 40 feet times 30 feet, that would give me 1,200 square feet. Okay, so I know that's the total area of the rectangle, but I'm going to need to subtract off the area of the pool, because we're not going to lay concrete in the pool, obviously, although it will have a concrete liner. We'd have to find that with the surface area. We'll get to that later. Okay, so we're doing the rectangle minus the area of the pool to get the area just that's around the edge of the pool. So that would be 732 square feet. Okay, makes sense. Let's look at a second example. Okay, so this second or example we're going to look at is a farming application called center pivot irrigation. So let's say that Farmer Brown owns a square field and uses a center pivot irrigation system which rotates around the field in a circular pattern to water his crop. Each side of his field is a half mile or 880 yards in length. What is the area of the portion of his field that does not get watered? Okay, so in case you've never seen one of these things before, here's a picture. Okay, so you've got this contraption that is anchored in the center of the field and rotates in a circle that wa and watering the crops as it goes. Some of them are electric powered, but some of them are also powered just by the water pressure itself, which moves the 
uh, sprinklers around the field. Okay, These kinds of systems are highly efficient, but they also leave the corners of the field unwatered. Okay, so that means if you've ever had a chance to like fly in a plane or something like that and look out over some farmland, sometimes you'll see a view that looks like this, where you can see the circular patterns on the land, and that's because of these center pivot irrigation systems. Okay, so that's just some background. Let's actually go about finding it now. So, the question you want to ask is what shapes are involved here? So, in this case, we have a square and a circle. If I want to find the area of the shaded part, then I could take the area of the square and subtract the area of the circle. The circle is not included in the shaded area, so I'll need to remove it by subtracting it, kind of like we removed the pool in the last example. Okay, so how can I find the areas of those two things? So for the square, the area is base times height, so that would be 880 yards times another 880 yards, which gives me 774,400 square yards. Gosh, that's a lot of square yards. Okay, what about the circle? The formula for area of a circle is pi r squared. But now, what's the radius? Well, if you notice, the length of the entire side of the square is 880 yards, which would be the same as the circle's diameter. So that means that the radius is half of that, which is 440. So, in that, so that means I have pi times 440 yards squared, which would give me about 608,212. I rounded to a whole number because it's such a giant number. Okay, so to find the shaded area then, I just need to subtract those two, which gives me an area of 166,188 square yards. Okay. Just for fun, I want to see what percent of the field that is. So if I take 166, 188 over the area of the entire square, that gives me 0.215 or 21.5%. So that means 21.5% of his field is not getting watered. Hmm. Okay, so hope that all made sense, and I'll see you guys in class tomorrow. All right, bye.